All right, if skeletons are not your thing, plenty of people turn to pumpkins for stunning fall displays. And did you know there are more than 350 types of pumpkins, gourds, and squash, and they're all on display at the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum. Garden Guy Dale Kay is there with us this morning, taking a look at the collection. And Dale, I hope you're going to say some of the names, because that might be my favorite part of these <laughs> pumpkin types. <laughs> yeah, there's so many names, so many varieties, and if you really want to see the diversity in that family of plants, there is no better place to come than the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum. It is decked out for fall, scarecrows, pumpkins, everything is here. But this morning, I want to share with you some breaking news. We think, and you'll only see this Fox 9 on Good Day, we think we have a world record of pumpkins growing in part because of this wonderful pumpkin grower, Jenny Tool. I just call you pumpkin, but so 350 is usually about the number, but I, you yes. think you've got how yes. many? We jumped up to 400 this year. 400 name varieties grown in just one single season. Absolutely, yep. And you think that's, a, that's possibly a Guinness Book? It, it might be, actually. I, I need to look into it further, but I'm pretty sure it's the most varieties grown. All right, well, I'm just going to call it, you know, I'm just going to call it right now that I think that's going to be a, a world record. <laughs> so, okay, let's get down into some of the names and what they're used for. But right. what, firstly, what's the difference between a pumpkin, a squash, and a gourd? Right, so pumpkins and gourds are strictly ornamental. So pumpkins, I consider like the orange ones or the yellow ones, um, even some of the red ones on there, just not great for eating. Um, really designed for ornamental or carving. Um, gourds have hard um, exteriors, so they're definitely more for exterior. Squash is everything that you can eat. Um, okay, so, so that's the ones that you want to bake with. And, right. And within that group, so many different varieties. Let's talk about the tree first before we right. get into all these Look at all these treats. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I am so lucky this morning. Before we get into that, tell me a little bit about the tree. You designed this. You, yes. you and your husband, John, design this every year. Yep. So my husband and I come up with a new theme every year. This theme um, of, of the, this year was Phoenix Rising. Um, so it's a lot of oranges and reds and yellows. So like, a, like the actual bird rising out of the ashes. Um, and we hope that, that it translates a little bit. But yes, we do design it. Um, it takes us about three days to put together because we have to wash all the pumpkins and then bring them over here. So. And I don't want to put you on the spot, but roughly how many different vignettes and displays are around at the that I don't actually know. I know at the Scarecrow Hill, um, we do have the key of the 400 varieties. This one, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they have pumpkins all over the all over the Arboretum. Okay, so there's one spot that, that's the key where you can see all 400. All 400 varieties. The Guinness there. Book of Records <laughs> on display. It's right in front of the visitor center here at the Arb. Okay, let's get into that. It's I guess it's that time of year. You know, yes. It gets a little chill in the air. It's time to bake. Time to get the oven on. Got to get that pumpkin spice, right? Get the pumpkin spice. <laughs> what? types of squash work best or whatever you kind of put together yes so and let's talk about names too because Shane back at the back at the station there wants to hear yes, names or me yes. butcher names I'm not so sure which. what I use for everything on the table here was a banana pumpkin that's in front of you um, which yep, is this one here yep that's candy roasted banana <coughs> candy roasted banana yep, so it's a great variety for baking almost sweet potato like so okay. it's got more of a texture like a sweet potato but great for baking and which one did this go into so that's in this one and the whoopie pies that looks really good i'm gonna have a <laughs> i'm gonna have a crack of that okay let's do another one um the the very large butternut i have here is actually called big chief um, but it has a beautiful moist texture on the inside and this is all flesh on the inside so you get a lot <laughs> you get a lot for this one um, and it also has a very small seed cavity um, so that was in the pumpkin pie and the pumpkin bars as well okay so the large big squash big chief is the name that went into the the pumpkin pies write that one down and you I should mention you can buy these at the Apple house up the road right yes, we will have all of them to, for sale until December actually um, it turns into the holiday house in November okay and do you, do you have one more or we do have moringa which is in front of you and I Mor like this is moringa right yep so I like to mix my squash varieties in my baking because you get a more oh. complex flavor I also do that with my soup as well so use more than one squash because you will get great layers of flavor that and I know what's the tidbit that you have where this is like matures like like good red wine right the longer these mm -hmm. things age right um, and they all have different it's called curing the process is called curing so it's basically them maturing it's almost like how a, a lasagna gets better the next day the flavors as it ages gets more complex and then the sugar builds as well 
And how do you age? Do you just leave it on the counter? Does it go in the fridge, or um, how do you? I keep them on shelves um, in a in an area that doesn't have a lot of moisture or um, temperature changes. I actually had one once for three years. So amazing storage. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so, and I've I've got to ask you why. Growing pumpkins is not Jenny's real job. No. Why do you, what's the thing with pumpkins and why do you like growing 400? Oh, just because there's so many of them and we're just only scratching the surface. There's, there's pumpkin and squash varieties from all over the world. Um, I really love growing a lot of orange pumpkins just because everybody has like a different one that they like to carve. Um, so I like to supply everybody with a, a different one. When we were kids, we only had like two different kinds of pumpkins we could get. So I just want to have more for people. Um, the squash thing is just because I love squash and I want to basically put it in everything and eat it for as long as I possibly can. Um, so I just want to get people to try things beyond butternuts and acorns. Perfect. I, I, I don't want to, th thank you, we got to go. But there really is only one place that you really only see 400 varieties of squash anywhere in the country, probably for that matter. And I'm going to try one of these little things because they look so good. Back to you. And but the tower behind him. Dale, I really, I think a great pumpkin name, if there's like an Australian variety, would be Bob's Your Uncle. And I'm just going to put that out there. You don't even need to respond. Your mouth is full. Just putting that out to the universe. No, I, no I'm working on it. She's okay. working on it. And we're, we are gonna, we're gonna either call it cheapest chips or Bob's your uncle. Wait, what was the first one? <laughs> uh, cheapest chips. Oh, I like that one too. I don't know what that means. Though. I don't either. Maybe I that's for know. next week. Okay. I'll, I'll explain it to you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.